And now, Stubag Full presents. The top five worst TV shows that I have ever seen. Okay, before we go in, let me just underline that this is the top five worst TV shows that I've ever seen. If you've seen worse, please tell me about it in the comments. I'll go track down a copy and run with it for a video if there's enough material there. And let me also underline that these are shows that I could only stomach one edition of. If they get better or worse later, I'll never know because I was given such a terrible experience that it turned me off for life. So, with that out of the way... Number 5 Okay, the reason that this one's on the list is very personal and different to the others, and you may think that it's harmless at first, but the reason that I really despise Come Dine With Me is that it's completely oblivious to what it's doing. Okay, if you're like me, generally of a nervous disposition, if you've ever been at a party with some friends, but mostly acquaintances, people that you don't know that well, and you felt a bit awkward and like everyone's secretly judging you, the meal you cooked, your dinner conversation, your manner, your body language, a joke you told, well, Come Dine With Me essentially reveals, yep, everyone is secretly judging you. They even give you little scores out of 10. So you better start second guessing what everyone else is thinking about you. They all have two faces, you know. They may laugh at a joke on the surface, but they're probably secretly thinking, what a wanker. And the obnoxious voiceover is almost like the voice in your head reinforcing the stress of being a perfect host. Careful, Julie, you're probably gonna end up cooking something horrible. Or burn. Everyone's gonna hate this meal, Julie. You're worthless. Everyone hates you, loser. Worst meal ever. Worst host of the show. One out of ten, Julie. You're a bad person. No one likes spending time with you, loser. If Come Dine With Me had any awareness of what it was doing and was actually trying to be a metaphor for social anxiety, maybe I could sort of appreciate it on some sort of weird, wanky hipster level. But as is, it's a genuinely harrowing experience, and every time I've watched it, it's just made me fucking angry. Number 4. If Katie Hopkins Ruled the World So, uh, okay, let me get this straight, okay. A television broadcaster, literally called TLC, decided to give a television show to Katie Hopkins. Let me repeat, a television station called Tender Loving Care gave a TV show to Katie Hopkins. Fucking, did no one sat in that pitching meeting think? Um, I know. Let's make the entire concept of irony completely fucking redundant. So If Katie Hopkins Ruled the World is a show where a bunch of comedians and experts try and figure out if Katie Hopkins' ideas would actually work if they were applied in real life. Okay, the main problem with this show is entirely in its foundation, because it had basically no target audience that it could aim for. Since Katie Hopkins always spouts the exact same rhetoric on any and all subjects, she's incredibly well known by this point because the stuff she says grabs headlines, everyone already knows what she's like and pretty much everyone's already made their mind up about her by now, and there isn't exactly that much of a chance that people who dislike her would ever be swayed by what she says purely because of the fact that she is Katie Hopkins, and a TV show survives on bringing bringing in new people, which it's not going to be able to do. She works on reality shows where she's a small fixture because she's a loudmouth and makes headlines. It's basically free publicity. But you can't measure a commentator's popularity on clicks alone, which is what a commissioner did here. The idea of getting her to carry an entire show, especially one which is essentially just preaching to the choir, doesn't work because why would anyone else watch this? Aside from car crash TV rubberneckers like me, of course. Seriously, is anyone surprised that this got cancelled because of low ratings? That's just such mind-bending logic that it stuns me that whoever commissioned this even considered it. Number 3. Channel 4's Sex Box 
Okay, so Channel 4 decided to put out a show called Sex Box, where members of the public were invited to have sex in an opaque box live on TV, come out into the studio and immediately talk about sex in a free and frank exchange of ideas with a panel of sex analysts in front of a studio audience. The theory was that just after having had sex, people are more likely to be open to having a discussion about it, which was conclusively proven to be false in about five minutes in the excruciatingly awkward conversations that we witnessed after the couples had finished fucking where they largely went sorta of quiet and said that they'd rather not talk about it. Yeah, the main problem with Sexbox is that most of the supposed science side of it was just meaningless waffle and never really justified the whole live sex experiment. One in ten of us say that we cheat on our partners. Why is that and how can we stop it? And I'm just sat there thinking, um, counselling? Why do you need to have people having sex in a box on TV? If there is any answer to that question, having sex live in a box on TV isn't it. It billed itself as an experiment, but no one ever really defined a purpose for sex box, which for a show about science, and I use the biggest set of quotation marks ever around the word science, is a massive problem. Personally, I'm hoping that if they do another series, they change it up and make it into a game show. In fact, going in, I thought it was going to be more like a game show where people shout out sex challenges. Like, say for example, they present the couple with an inanimate object and instruct them to have sex with it in the most creative way possible. I mean, sure, it'd be gross, but we've never seen someone use a lawnmower for the purpose of sex before, and I think it would be at the very least interesting. More interesting than this shit. And number two, Celebrity Apprentice USA. As I mentioned before, the entire reason I detest this show with every fibre of my being hasn't even got anything to do with the guy who hosted it. I've hated this piece of dog shit ever since I sat through an edition of it when I decided to watch it out of morbid curiosity. It's weird because the UK version of The Apprentice is vaguely considered to be one of the few reality TV shows that it's socially acceptable to admit to liking, and yeah, I will admit, I do kinda like it on occasion. It's essentially kinda like a game show where Alan Sugar gives contestants a mini business to operate for the duration and importantly, episodes typically consist of short and succinct steps into starting a business, to brainstorming, to manufacturing, to selling, to conclusion. For the most part, it's very focused, it's efficiently paced, well edited, and everything's there that needs to be there. The US version, by complete contrast, is lowest common denominator trash. The show is so far up its own arse and it's got little to no interest in the task at hand of getting celebrities to operate a business. It just keeps on padding out its runtime with meaningless redundant filler sequences and interviews, self-indulgent as fuck posturing from contestants and from Trump himself, and it just tests your patience so violently that I feel like I'm about to explode every six seconds into screeches of, IS ANYTHING GOING TO FUCKING HAPPEN YET? Okay, so th this guy was off a TV show, and, and this lady does stuff, and Trump is a businessman, and he's like a badass or whatever. This is a new series of The Apprentice, in which people are gonna do some stuff. Deciding your team names in a sequence that feels like it lasts eight fucking hours. It's been 20 minutes, and nothing has fucking happened yet. How anyone sat through this piece of dog shit for years, I have no idea. And now, the absolute worst TV show I have ever seen. It was broadcast in 2014. It took me ages and ages to track down a copy of this and I'm bloody shocked I managed to. I'm probably one of about 12 people who remembers this even happened. I doubt even most of the people involved in it remember. Three years after broadcast, there is approximately one video of it on YouTube and it was broadcast at 9pm on ITV on Saturdays. Prime time for six weeks, just after Britain's Got Talent. How is it possible to completely bury a show with this much exposure? ITV have a strong tendency to try and hide their most egregious errors, and in the age of the internet, you'd think they wouldn't be able to, but... Nope, they've conclusively proven that a TV executive can fuck up so monumentally on national TV and totally get away with it. They keep managing to get away with terrible idea after terrible idea year after year. Does anyone remember when they did celebrity sheepdog trials? Yeah, sounds like a joke, doesn't it? Something Alan Partridge would suggest. But they did do it. Celebrity sheepdog trials. That was a real show. And so was this. Number one, Amazing Greys. Okay, so 
Paddy McGuinness and Angela Rippon lead teams of young people and teams of old people in a series of generation game style contests to see who is better, old people or young people. What the fuck? Who is chucking money at shit like this? I just, just... Was this the same person that came up with celebrity sheepdog trials? The idea appears to have had its genesis from, you know those bits in reality TV shows where a contestant appears on stage, like on The X Factor or Britain's Got Talent, and it's like a little old man or a little old lady, and the judges will go, how old are you? And they'll say, I'm 85 years old. And the audience will immediately either applaud or go, aww, en masse, because that's a big number. Which, alright, it's impressive that they're 85 and still doing stuff, but if you draw attention to the fact that a person is old, as opposed to what it is they're actually doing, it comes across as patronising. But that's easy enough to swallow in a 5 minute audition slot on The X Factor or Britain's Got Talent. But this show tried to drag that across an entire hour. Wait, wait a second, wait. Wait, if they'll chuck money at any old shit like this, I... Oh my god, where's a pen? Okay, so a game show where ordinary members of the public are given rubbish bags from celebrities' homes and they have to search through the garbage and try and figure out which celebrity it came from. And the winner gets to keep all of the famous trash. I call it, win what's been in their bin. Wow, being a TV executive is so hard. They totally deserve to get paid way more than doctors, nurses, firefighters, policemen or teachers. It's such a noble profession.